the weirdest thing is I've been working with the guy for three years, at least. And this is probably the second time ever I have ever made reference to or quoted a Rational Mail <laughs> article or essay. Welcome to the Red Pill. Welcome to the Mids Watch. It's Ryan. And this post is kind of a useful one. It's about the dangers of Red Pill. Now, it's got two parts to it. The first part is explaining the danger based on an article by Rollo Tomasi, which he got from an article written by a Return of Kings writer. I'm not going to focus too much on that because you can go read Rollo stuff. I'm not going to I'm not going to regurgitate it. But then it kind of got into the differences in male spaces, which I find it's not it's more meta than I usually talk about, but the idea of how the red pill and the married red pill have kind of created different atmospheres for male sexual dynamics, as well as what you'll see on YouTube, on Twitter, all the different places. It lets you know the, I almost want to say just like the nuances of male camaraderie and how there really is a skill to putting together a male space that's just lacking today in so many ways. Uh, the first one was the article by Rollo Tomasi, The Dangers of Red Pill. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, the part that he's getting at, where is the part I want to read here? There it is. So I quoted this today because I find myself having to temper and measure my red pill evangelism with people I know personally or interact with professionally. I say evangelism because in spite of any measured explanation, this is what it comes off as to most uninitiated blue pill plug-in people. There is a degree of diplomatic tact you have to practice the more red pill aware a man becomes. Basically, don't red pill your friends because you starting to spout out, oh, I read this thing from Ryan's channel. I've read fuck files and I got this. I watched the Rational Males audio streams. I read his book. And you guys need to learn about all this stuff. And you start expelling all these useful utilities and you're calling them truths or philosophies. And that's great. But you got to realize that's extremely off-putting. You basically sound like a Scientologist. And so the two problems here are one, if you get some guy who's simping for his wife, you know, lets her go, like this is that weird trend now where guys are like letting their wives go out on dates, cucking it up and then coming back and asking how it went, which I can't get behind it, but whatever, it's their life. You start telling that guy how that's not in his best interest, he's gonna lash out at you. So you shouldn't do that. At the same time, you sound like an idiot trying to sell Amway products to people. So again, just don't red pill your friends. If they need it, they know where to find it. And this kind of all devolved into, there's always the cheerleading between the married red pill and the red pill. The married red pill's like, oh, we are red pill on hard mode. And the red pill's like, well, we are the OG and we are the real thing. And we're more pure and everybody's wagging their dicks and nothing gets solved. So here we are. Uh, Jack Tana Hearts comes in again. In my opinion, the submissions you may read in the Red Pill subreddit are not consistently Red Pill or may dwell on areas of Red Pill that are not particularly useful to people, especially like us. And what he means by us is grown-ups. So, the guy before him, Angel's Fan... You know what, I should almost put... Do I want to? Sure, why not? Let me grab the parent one here. So this guy is not too important. He's just kind of a guy made a random comedy. He's like, I still believe that they are different things between married and the red pill. I find very little value in the red pill and an immense amount of value in the married red pill. And that's when I kind of take issue with as well, but that's what we're getting used to here. So I think this guy is referring to subreddit communities and not the actual ideas, the theories, the philosophies, whatever you want to call it. If so, I actually agree with him completely. The red pill is way too focused on the anchor stage. You know, you can basically insert any modern red-pilled space at this point for that. But hey, back in the day, the red pill was the anger central. Uh, I can see why they want to be a safe space for that, but essentially it ends up developing into a community based on outrage. Now, I under it's a tough balance. Like, I understand that. If it's a, if you say, dude, get over your anger, you end up sounding like some annoying women don't owe you sex social justice warrior, and there's enough spaces outside of the red pill to get that response. But if you sympathize too much with that anger, then you never really let it go and get past it. So the red pill seems to have erred on the side of being that safe space. 
Now, normally that wouldn't be problematic, but the red pill is also a large internet community, which tends to lose intellectual rigor, for lack of a better term, as they increase in size. A lot more members mean a lot more viewpoints being expressed, which means only the most uncontroversial viewpoints are globally acceptable. Any other type of opinion or risk risks you getting attacked from the some subgroup of the community. Now, unfortunately, uncontroversial can quickly evolve or devolve into extreme or at least repetitive. You see this in politics all the time. Propose an idea with any nuance, you know, cut taxes, but also eliminate various tax deductions. And you'll open up seven, several different attack angles. Now propose cut all the taxes, and nobody can do that. But you're not exactly moving the governing public policy discussion forward, are you? Ian, what do, uh, not Ryan Stone, I'm, I see he's the most important guy in the world, Ryan Stone. Give a fuck about Ryan Stone. Or me and him have gone back and forth, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Ryan Stone does not pass the six foot test. He's not even a man. So I don't give a fuck what Ryan Stone. He's like, as a side note, I want to say that I think Dread, and to a lesser extent, AWALT, are our versions of this. For example, AWALT is our version of Taxes Are Too High, which we all agree on. AWALT in this case stands for All Women Are Like That, which is a, it's a mental model. It's like, treat all guns as loaded. Anyways. So we may all agree on that, but what some of us may not agree on is that every tax cut is good. Or personally for me, I hope the Married Red Pill continues to be an area where I can debate why some tax cuts are better than others, or why some tax cuts may be bad for some and good for others. And I don't need to worry about getting a response like, Jack Ten of Hearts thinks tax cuts are bad, which means he doesn't want to cut taxes, which means he thinks they're too high, which means he doesn't believe in this fundamental principle and therefore he needs to get out of here. Another point too, the Red Pill's not a movement. There's no movement leader, there's no spokesperson, which may aid in its effectiveness if it did, but it also can limit it. He's like, I briefly spent time on purple pill debate, and if you guys don't know what that is, don't look it up because it is a cesspool of nonsense. So I briefly spent time there, which I intentionally did not make it linkable here, since it was a giant waste of time. Because half the posts there are, let's debate whether red pill is misogynistic, and here is Exhibit A, I present this random comment about how women are retards and shouldn't be allowed to vote, which got 87 upvotes. And of course, some red pill dudes will say, look at that guy was an idiot. That's not red pill, which naturally gets countered with, well, that's a no true Scotsman fallacy. And the debate just gets dumber from there. So safe space for anger stage, plus uncontroversial op opinions are most popular, plus lack of leadership to clarify canonical principles equals a lot of angry dudes, posting a lot of angry and contradictory things. Now in the married red pill, we are generally mature enough to get past the anger stage, you know, most of us are well into our fourth stage, depression, by the time we post. And we're a small enough community that we can extend red pill theory to things like marriage and come out intellectually stronger for it. Lastly, in the red pill sub, there's just too much focus on macro society implications for everything. Personally, I'm just too goddamn busy to worry about whether feminism is ruining and everything or whether whatever else they get all worked up about. And I suspect a lot of us feel that way on the married red pill. I totally understand being angry at how your own slice of society basically duped you, but on the red pill, you have 19 year olds literally getting infuriated because some millionaire in another country got divorce raped. Yes, they won't. Let's go post about how much that sucks instead of taking ownership of our lives and discussing what we can do about it. And it's really the fundamental problem. I almost want to say it's just a demographic problem, but it runs deeper than that. This is this is on me near now. Subreddits are neat in that they should give you a glimpse into the human condition and they didn't really intend to. I've talked to it before about a concept called flavor posters, but in any online or offline community, the Pareto principle applies. 80% of the work is getting done by 20% of the people. Now, if you think I'm talking about moderators, I'm not. Moderators help at first, but there's just too many people to too few moderators to make a long-term impact. What happens in any community is the 20% of the people who are putting in all the work, all the content, setting all the social norms, they're called flavor posters. And generally speaking, those are the people that will make or break your communities, or at least guide it to a certain way of acting. Now, if you have people coming in too fast, if you grow too large, the flavor posters just like get lost in the mess, like a dilution thing. 
and then you just regress to the mean and that's where you have like whaminate shit online all the time of which is so popular right now i think the greatest show in the red pill space right now is like a bunch of 28 year olds yelling at only fans models and getting them drunk and then kicking them off the show talking about how they're saving lives and i'm just like i'm just too old for this i've never felt old until people are telling me how entertaining that show was and i'm just like i don't get it i'm, I'm done i'm done uh so what does this matter for you i think the big takeaways from this are just to realize when you're into a space look at who the most prolific people are because they generally speaking are the ones that are going to drive a place to one place or another and if you don't see one it's good to be one if you want to change a space if you want to make something better you essentially have to you know put in the work be the change you want to see and i'm not saying it's easy and i'm not saying you want to do it nor do you have to do it but a good example for this is if you guys have ever been into a live stream chat with any of my guys amazing group of flavor posters they know what they're doing they're generally mature they understand that the anger is a phase and i would say probably done the best job out of anybody threading that needle between a non-judgmental place to allow guys to have their anger and get it out of their system and learn from it and do what they need to do while also not being a space that just makes it so safe that it can be an incubator for more anger so take from that what you will i know it's not the most practical red pilled example on this one but it's always neat to see ever you see these arguments over you know red pill is dead and this guy's all about outrage and these guys are better and this guy's better like these are the same conversations we had seven years ago and i almost want to give like the red pill versus married red pill some credit here because Apparently that place was too anger, too angry filled, just full of a bunch of angry incels, bunch of teenagers. But, you know, we still have the same thing now and that place is still here today. So it's almost just like built into the system. And the best you can do is just carve out a space that's well run and more focused. Take it for what it's worth. Anyways, catch you guys in the next one. Cheers, boys.